Hi everyone, and in today's video we are going to play a bit with resin. I want to try to make another geode painting, and as I did one of them a couple of weeks ago, it was time to give it another try, just to raise my skill level in making those. <laughs> Just in case you wonder if you hear some heavy breathing in the background and some metal noises, this is Patrick doing some sports. Um, actually, he's weightlifting and push-ups and stuff today, so just in case you wonder. What you cannot see here in the video, before I started recording, I taped the edges. And this again is duct tape, or T-Rex tape, or fiber tape, whatever you call it in your area. This is actually a very strong kind of tape with texture fibers in it. It is really strong and sticks almost to everything, but not to the resin once it's cured, which is really cool. So you can block it from flowing around and it's very cheap and easy to do actually. So the surface that I'm working on is a one centimeter thick MDF board cut into 40 by 40 centimeter of size, which is a fairly large and a nice size to work with. So once the edges were typed, I decided to paint the background. I learned in my last attempt that it is easier having a darker background. It does not have to be black, but it should be darker than a regular white or this beige brown wooden tone that I have here. And as my final result should be on the purple side of my color scheme, I decided to paint the background just in a mid-range red tone. But of course you can use whatever tone you like to use. Normally it doesn't really show through in the very end, so the resin and the pigments normally are opaque if you use enough of the pigments. But just in case something would shine through, I decided for red as this is supposed to be the color range. If you're going to make somewhat greenish color range and decide for a black background and you don't have enough pigments there, you might see the black through it in some area or darken your greens too much. So I, I don't know, I would just recommend using a somewhat close color to the background that you want to pour, just an idea. So once this was done and everything was dried, which ran fairly quickly, I decided for my design. I again used my glass nuggets as you have seen me using them before. I do have those in a couple of different sizes and colors, so I just ordered some in different kinds of colors, which makes it easier in the end if I plan to do more of those. And I guess I will do more of those. <laughs> So I decided for the white ones, which is actually not really white, it's clear glass. But as the edges are broken, they seem to be a bit matte. Then I added some red ones. And in the middle, this is just some black painted stones. I ordered them like they are, so I did not really paint them. But they look really cool and they do not change their color if the resin goes over them. If you put your resin over the glass nuggets, all these matte edges are going to become crystal clear in the end. So actually when you pour something colorful over the clear glass nuggets, they will more or less take the color that you pour over them. The resin is going to flow underneath and in between the gaps of these uh, nuggets, but as they are clear, they will take up the color that you are pouring over them. And the good thing, if you put everything down in the first place, you can actually really decide if you like the design that you planned out or if it does not look as pleasing once you have it in front of you. So I went rearranging it every now and then until I had a feeling that, well, this might be the design that I like in the very end. So this of course is totally up to you when you give it a try yourself. When all the basics were done, I had to make a decision which resin I'm going to use. And this time I opted for my art resin. It is the more expensive resin and I'm totally aware of that, but I wanted to give it a try as my first attempt a couple weeks back I used my cheaper resin. It worked pretty cool, I really liked the result, but this stuff is really thin and the art resin compared to it is really thicker and I thought it might be easier to get straight lines when it comes to the geode painting. So I mixed up my resin, I used a couple of pigments and metallic paints and my resin paste, which is the white actually, which is really opaque and cool. And then I thought about if I should pour it right onto it or if I should wait until the resin cures a bit and gets even thicker. But I honestly, I was not sure if I should do so. So I decided to pour everything on there. It is a quite thin layer though, but you can see in this better version, it is still flooring to an edge. And again, I really thought I was level with this. Actually, I was not. So everything was flowing to the upper edge again, and I did not really notice once I was working on it, because 
as the resin is thicker, it flew quite slowly, but it did. And the colors were intermixing way more than I expected and I wanted to. So I seem to be not really successful with this one. As there was not so much that I could do at this point, so you, there's no way you can stop the resin from intermixing and flowing and keeping it separated. No, no way, I've tried it. So I just decided to let it sit, let it cure until it's, yeah, cured. <laughs> and give it another try in the second layer on the next day. I mixed the same colors and I really tried to make everything as level as I could this time, so I elevated the backside a bit just to have everything stay more stable in the middle. I used even less resin for each layer so that even less can flow around, but still things were flowing more than I hoped to. I guess it's really important to be patient which is something I struggle with all the time, and wait until the resin really settles a bit and gets thicker from its own. So perhaps at the end of the working time that you have available with the resin. The art resin has about 30 minutes, 30 to 35 to, to work with until it starts curing, so I probably should wait until the end of this time span. I will keep investigating. <laughs> So I put it aside until the next day and when everything was cured and final result was done, I added the lines with the Posca markers. The downside though, when I first get my first package of them, I ordered the wrong size. So I really have these fine liner type, really thin yeah, pens, which really do not make such big lines. So I had to really actually draw these lines. I will have to order them on a bigger size next time so that I can just use one pencil stroke and I have the line that I want in the thickness that I need. And this is the end result. I'm going to show you a video and some photos in the very end. I hope you liked it. I did another one which is coming in the next video, so I did sped up this one here and didn't explain the details because I do not want to be too repetitive as I'm going to most likely tell them the same things in the next video as well. <laughs> the look of the next geode is completely different than this one. So this was attempt number one. And yeah, I'm going to test this kind of artwork further because I really like the concept and I really want to improve on that. As I feel there is really some space for improvement. <laughs> so thanks for your time and watching. I hope you liked this video as I usually do. If you're new to my channel and did not subscribe yet, I would love if you join our family here and Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. And if you liked this video, I would really appreciate if you could share it with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, here on YouTube, of course. It really means a lot to me and helps my channel grow a bit. And as always, I look forward to read your comments and get some feedback of you. Looking forward to read it and hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. <laughs> bye bye.